vote of county commission is now back in session. Next on the agenda will be the planning and zoning. Ms. Amy Kelly report. Good morning. Good this morning. morning on our board of adjustment report, we oh, have yeah. two requests. Oops, I'm sorry. Oh, the board of adjustment. Okay. Board um, of adjustment, I'm sorry. We have a consideration of a request to construct a 1,628 square foot house, 13 feet into the critical habitat zone on property described as lot 7, 8, and 9, unrecorded Pine Log Creek subdivision, 130 Pine Log Drive, lying in section 22, Township 6 South, Range 4 West, Carabelle, Franklin County, Florida. Request submitted by Charles Oxendine, agent for Deborah, Deborah Clifford, applicant. This item was tabled at the December 2019 Board of Adjustment meeting. Um, and the same plan has been resubmitted. Um, the Board of Adjustment recommendation was a 2-2 vote. Motion to approve, uh, motion died. Um, according to an August um, 2002 policy, if you build over, um, if you request a variance into the critical habitat, then you're limited to a thousand square foot footprint of anything that has roof over it. So this has um, more than a thousand square foot of roof. And so, um, because of the policy, the count um, on our end, we're asking for it to be denied. Pleasure to vote. Motion to deny. Got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Paris. Second. Second by Commissioner Boat. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. I got one opposed, the rest of it passed. Pass it with Commissioner a Master opposing. Mr. Chairman, before we move on to the next item, if, if I may, uh, one of the issues here is, is frankly, the, the application should not have been processed by planning and zoning staff. And I don't mean anything harmful. I've talked to Ms. Ms. Amy about this request, but I would ask that the board direct P and Z staff not to accept and process applications. Uh, that are inconsistent with prior established board policy. In this case, um, the, the, the roofed over area of a variance request in the critical habitat is 1,000 square feet, and the applicant should not be submitting applications that are inconsistent with that policy. I'd, I'd like to make that motion. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, if I could discuss this a little bit. This 1,000 square feet has been in in place for a long time. If you can show a hardship, then we will allow you to have a thousand square feet and you may encroach into the, to the uh, critical habitat, but you're not allowed to build over a thousand square feet. And this should have been relayed to the gentleman standing at the podium long before it got this far. It should have never went to BOA. It's, it's directly a, uh, in conflict with county policy. So I want to make that motion that anything like this ever again, if it's over a thousand square feet, not come to this board uh, based on the count, uh, present county policy. And I'd like to put that in form of a motion. I got a motion on full by Commissioner Paris. Second. Second by yeah. Commissioner Jones. Any more discussion on it? I have something, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Um, now, I just want to clarify. <clears throat> That's why I haven't spoken to him now. So this is the is the 1,600 square feet of what we just denied living space, or is it just the roof line? The roof line. OK. I just wanted to clarify. It's roof. We did have several discussions about this policy before it went to the Board of Adjustments. Okay. So they were aware of the situation before that. I mean, they got to realize we got policies and procedures. And that's what we follow. That's what we go by. Uh, what we do hey, mr chairman just okay. one more thing i just want to emphasize so important to the public when you are planning on building properties in franklin county come to our planning and zoning department with your real estate agent in hand and understand what is the actual rules and guidelines and everything that you're looking at on the piece of property that you're planning on building your dream on go ahead sir oh I guess y'all already den de denied this. Let me get but, the name but for the record, please. Charles Oxendine, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. This lady bought three lots 
that had three mobile homes on it that had three permitted septic tanks. I've got a letter from the state that the tanks can be used. She combined the three lots. She owns 3.44 acres of land. And we have built, she just wanted to uh, screen my understanding if we didn't put a roof over it, we, we could do it. If it's a problem with the, the runoff, we could gutter the house and run the water into a septic tank. We got two extra ones that we don't need. And when this went into effect, and, and I think the last ruling might have been in 2002, but y'all took, the board took this on, I think in the 80s. At that time, a house didn't have to be 20 foot in the air. And, and, and the, the, if we're worried about the ecological point of all this, the sun and the wind and, the, and everything else can go and come up under that house, the same that it's doing today. And where it says 13 foot of the house goes in to the critical habitat zone, which is not the flood zone. I mean, it's not the, the actual low water, the high water area. That 13 feet is a real sharp pie wedge, and the amount of space that this house needs to sit, the, the, the porch of the house need, that we're trying to get, that we've tried ever, and Miss Amy has been very helpful. We've tried to reconfigure everything and move it over this way and move it over that way. It would be about from the corner there, not quite, about the, the American flag there, that's how much room we're talking about going into the critical habitat. And there, there's got to be a point that we say, we did this in the, in the 80s when a house could sit on the ground, now it's going to be 20 foot in the air. And if we're worried about that, that critical habitat zone, I mean, it's the same way that they do docks now. We don't build them right on the water, we build them up so the sun can get under there and make the vegetation grow. I, I just, th if there's ever been a hardship case, this is a hardship case. And I, that's all. Mr. Chairman, mm. I just think of standard operating procedure and quality control and something that the people can depend upon. And when we have standards that have been promulgated from many, many multiple state agencies and federal agencies, it is not appropriate to disobey those standards of practice because that begins to add chaos and confusion in thinking. And when we are applying for all kinds of grants, both now and in the future, we want to be able to say here in Franklin County that we do adhere to a quality standard control, quality assurance standard of practice, and we don't disobey those things. So that those who will come here and build can come and build with the assurance that they've got good solid statutes to stand upon. And our planning and zoning department stands behind that as well. Anybody else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That pass is done. Thank y'all. Yes, sir. <coughs> Next on, well. The second item is a consideration of a request to extend an existing seawall an additional 33 feet towards the east and 28 feet into the critical habitat zone on property described as lot 17, block U, Lanark Beach, unit 12284, U.S. Highway 98 East, Lanark, Franklin County, Florida. Request submitted by Pamela. Um, apparently didn't put the whole last, Pamela Brown. Um, the Board of Adjustments action was unanimous and vote in favor. Um, I'll show you the document. They're going to, um, they're wanting to extend the seawall 33 feet um, to the east and leave a 12 foot um, separation between the um, adjoining property owner and go 28 feet into the critical habitat zone. Um, we did receive a letter from the adjoining property owner. He had concerns um, that it would be um, eroding their own prop their property. Um, but they did not um, state that they were in total opposition of it. They were just concerned um, of additional erosion. Um, so they voted, the VOA voted 
Oh, in favor? Yes, sir. Pledge of the board. Can we have a discussion? Go ahead. Uh, again, I, I see the confession here that it's moving that seawall 28 feet into the critical habitat zone again. And in my opinion, it's breaching a standard of practice. And I would be in favor of denying this permit. That's a motion. I'll make that a motion. Got a motion on flow by Commissioner Burke. I got a motion on the flow by Commissioner Burke. Motion died for a lack of second. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. This is something that we typically do, Amy. Yes, sir. Is we have done. That we typically um, allowed, it's, a, uh, it's a rock. And I, and I understand. I understand the concern of the adjoining property owner about yeah. typ typically when you build a seawall, it, it does erode at both ends. Uh, so that's you know that's just something that you got you got to acknowledge that that happens. Uh, but I just want to point that out. This is not un unlike yeah. the previous uh, situation where we have a county policy that you cannot build more than a thousand square feet if you're trying to prove a hardship within the critical habitat zone. Uh, I don't think there is a county policy on, on the extension or, or building a seawall. Two different things altogether. Yes, sir. Pledge of the board. Motion to approve. Second. Got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Paris, second by Commissioner Jones. Any more discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. I passed the four to one with Commissioner Burt opposing. <coughs> Next on the agenda will be the planning and zoning. Ms. Amy Kelly. <coughs> okay, thank you. Um, we have a consideration of a request to construct a single family private dock located at lot five, Alligator Harbor, unrecorded, 143 Harbor Circle, Alligator Point, Franklin County, Florida. The dock will be 210 foot wide, long and four foot wide with a 13 by 28 covered boat lift and a th three and a half foot by 13 foot terminus. The applicant has all state and federal permits request submitted by Larry Joe Colson agent for Allen and Karen Davis applicants. And there's an existing house on the property. So moved. Sir. Second. Got a motion on approval by Commissioner Masters, second by two that will be Commissioner Burke and Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, that passed unanimous. Okay. We have a consideration of a request to construct a single family private dock located at lot 11, block five, Carabell River subdivision, 309 River Road, Carabelle, Franklin County, Florida. The dock walkway will be six foot by four foot with a three foot by 18 foot finger pier and two three foot by 35 foot finger piers and a 12 foot by 32 foot covered boat lift. Applicant has state permits and will be contingent upon receiving the federal permit. Request submitted by Garlic Environmental Agency, um, agent for Jimmy Mage applicant and there's an existing house. So moved. Got a motion on vote by Commissioner Mass. Second. Second by Commissioner Burt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That pass unanimous. Okay. Consideration of a request to construct a single family private dock located at Lot 8, Block 65, Unit 5, 709 Randolph Street, St. George Island, Franklin County, Florida. The dock walkway will be 15 foot by 5 foot and have a 60 by 10 foot um, parallel dock. The applicant has the DEP self certification request submitted by Lee Chapin applicant. Um, he does have a proposed site plan for a house, but there's no house there. This is an after the fact request and the dock has already been um, constructed. Planning and zoning recommendation was a four to one vote. Recommended approval contingent upon applying for a DEP exemption and obtaining the federal permit. After the fact. <laughs> yeah. How did this happen? Um, oh, Mr. Chairman, if I might. Yeah. He, he How do you build a dock? I mean, everybody knows you got to have a permit to build a dock. So what? what's yes, the deal sir. with this? Well, we, we received a complaint, and, um, and then he had contacted us for power. So we told him we had had a complaint, and um, we could not issue a powerful permit. 
for it. So he would have, we told him he would have to apply for a DP, DEP permit. So he did bring that in with a, um, a survey showing that he wouldn't cross over the, he didn't cross over the riparian lines. And he's eight feet over the um, canal. Um, so he doesn't exceed the 25%. Um, it falls in line. Um, the self-certification is um, the first step in receiving, um, starting the process. Um, basically, I contacted DEP and they said that that is like a, um, in good faith that they'll build what they say that they're going to build and not go over. But since it's an after the fact, DEP is going to require them to apply for an exemption. And then core does not automatically approve. They would have to apply for a core permit. Um, so he's going to have to go through those steps before we issue a permit. Okay. Chairman, can I ask a question? Amy, again, if, if for some reason they have a problem obtaining these permits, what's next? Well, um, DEP and CORE have their own um, teams. If they, you know, if they don't approve these permits, more than likely he would have to remove it. So it would still come back to us is what I'm saying? It, it's a possibility. Okay. But it kind of, Mr. Chairman, it kind of sounds like if we go ahead and approve it, then he can go to DEP and the CORE say, well, the county has now approved it, but you didn't come to the county before you built it. I mean. It's backwards, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it's going to use our permit that we now are fixing a grant or may grant as a supporting document that the county's fine with it when he applies to DEP and he applies to the court. I mean. Yeah. I don't know what's in the rules, but. I don't know. Real pleasure, pleasure, Lord. <laughs> yeah. This don't seem right. <clears throat> you know you got to have a permit when you build a dock in the waterway. I don't see how you can say you don't know that. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Well, deal with pleasure, Lord. Should we table this for some further action on the part of the applicant it because it's backwards and I don't think this county wants to approve something with the inference that we're affirming something to DEP until DEP comes in with their standards that's a lawyer yeah, question yeah you know, we can con I can contact him yeah. and let him know that he has to you know be approved for an exemption sure just and the court yeah, standard and like everybody else for, does yeah. uh, final approval once he submits those items yeah. to, to the county um, the permit will be a double double fee permit um, because it's after the fact yes sir yeah i'm gonna make a motion that come back with your dep permit the course permit and then bring that back is that not the normal procedure that we use we don't grant this kind of stuff um we regard them to come, upon. you know um we generally they come before they start building however but he did it backwards mm. um so we required him to go through the process. And, um, you know, it would, if you approved it today, it would be contingent upon those items. No. But if you want to table it and require him to do the exemption and um, the core permit, those are two separate functions that he would be required to have. And that's per DEP. And um, so if we wanted to table it, that would be fine um, until he brought us back those things. Mr. Shuler, give me the loan. <laughs> Commissioner, I'll echo what uh, Commissioner Bolt has said. Table this matter. Uh, I'm just hearing about this live this morning. I mean, typically the rules are uh, we used to not give local permits until all the other permits had been obtained, but the legislature took that authority away from us a long time ago. Um, so my recommendation, and you, you do have the ability to table this matter, gather more information. So I would recommend that you table it. Let's gather more information and come back and address this at a future date. Most likely, you're not going to be able to con condition your local permit on, on first receiving your, your federal and state permits because the legislature, as I said, uh, under the view of streamlining the permitting process you know, 15, 18 years ago, um, the, the law was changed as to what we could and could not do locally. But you certainly are fully entitled to table this matter and think about it and come back and address it at a future date. Sir. Okay, pleasure to boot. Uh, good question. So, was your motion to table? That's what your motion was. I'm just clarifying. 
I didn't make a motion. Oh, I thought you did. Well, I mean, it just seems. <coughs> I know we usually issue permits contingent upon getting your core permit, your DEP permit. But in this case, where the docks already been built, I'd be in favor of tabling. Okay, I'll make a motion to table it. Second. <clears throat> I got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Jones, second by Commissioner Parrish. Any more discussion? You know, we got, we got to set something in stone that you just can't go out there and do things. We got a process. And and also we we require these things contingent upon because DEP doesn't give us the we can't hold the process up. However, um, we do hold the permit up until we have those items. We don't issue a permit to anybody um, without those items in place. Okay. Alrighty. Y'all ready to vote? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I pass it down. Okay. We have a consideration of a request um, to construct a single family private dock located at lot three, block 62, unit five. 331 Land Street, St. George Island, Franklin County, Florida. The dock walkway will be five foot by 20 foot with a four foot by 33 foot finger pier with two four foot by 28 finger piers and an eight by 35 finger, um, foot finger pier and one 13 by 28 foot um, covered boat lift and one 13 by 28 foot um, uncovered boat lift. The applicant has the DEP exemption request submitted by Alan Anderson, applicant, um, and there is a proposed house. Um, it was a unanimous recommendation appro um, to approve contingent upon the federal permit. Pleasure to the board. I have a question, Mr. Okay. Chairman, if it's okay. Go ahead. Uh, Amy, this is in the bay, correct? This is in a, um, a canal. It's in the canal, okay. That's different, okay. That clarifies what I was gonna ask. Motion to approve. A motion on flow by Commissioner Jones. Second. Second by Commissioner Massey. Any more discussion on this one? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passes now. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. That's it? No? And that concludes the planning and zoning report. Now we got the public uh -huh. hearing. We have um, been requested to review our fee schedule for um, our permitting fees and fine schedule recently. And um, so I've put together a narrative. Um, we've um, all spoke, um, you know, separately concerning what, um, what we are proposing. And um, just want, kind of want to educate the, the audience about what we're proposing and how we came up with it and um, and everything. So, um. Ms. Amy, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Uh, oh, we didn't have no time, special time on this, so we can go ahead on it, right? Sir? We didn't have no special time for this to start, right? Yeah, this isn't the public hearing yet. This is, if you look, it's item number 20. I'm what sorry, time was the 14 14 scheduled to start? Right before, right before the public hearing. The 10. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, okay. I got it. But I we, we can't start the public hearings early, but we are getting to it in due course. Obviously, the, the board controls when you hold your public hearings. Um, so if you wanted to stop now, you could and conduct the public hearings, but you would also be appropriate to let her finish her report and then move on to the public hearings. It's really the choice of the board. No, I was looking at my glasses on, Mr. I was looking at <laughs> Go ahead. I need a new pair, I guess. We'll make it county issue. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Thing. Sorry about that. Uh -huh. 
Okay. Okay. Um, the Franklin County um, Building Department fee schedule um, update request. The Building Department has been requested to update their permit fee schedule. According to the Florida Building Code, permit fees are um, collected to be used to fully support that department. In the 2019 fiscal year, the Building Department was budgeted $204,750 to cover our department. Permit fees alone in that same fiscal year only brought in $175,000 $393.58, which did not fully cover the budget with a deficit of $29,356.42 and would have relied on the ad valorem taxes to cover the de deficit. I recently revisited the surrounding county's um, ordinances, Wakulla, Gulf, and Calhoun, and I kept seeing that they had adopted the ICC data valuation table, Gulf County in 2012 and Calhoun um, County recently. Both Wakulla and Gulf use a permitting system with the um, ICC data valuation calculator and Calhoun County as well, since Gulf County has been contracted as their building official. If the board approves this request, the county would be on the same playing, um, playing field as the surrounding adjacent counties. As of right now, Franklin County has one of the lowest permitting fee schedules in the state. I began investigating the ICC data valuation table and it is a fluctuating um, table. When the market is up, the table may increase slightly, and when the market is down, the table decreases slightly. The table will never increase excessively um, nor plummet. This table is designed with an occupancy group, such as commercial, multifamily, single family, and types of construction, such as wood frame, block, metal frame structures. It also includes a valuation, permit fee, plan review fee, and it separates the radon surcharges as required by the Department of Business and Professional Regulations and the Department of Community Affairs. For example, a simple wood frame home with a one hour fry rating at 1,800 square feet, the current value of that building would be $241,900 with a current permit fee of $1,249. That includes all supplemental permits at $50 each. The proposed value would decrease in value by, it would be $184,896, but the proposed um, permit fee would go um, up to $2,313.74. That includes um, supplemental fees at $100 each, the difference of $1,064.74. Our proposed fee schedule resolution is also proposing to change the following fees. Um, mobile homes. Currently, we um, have for single wide mobile homes $75 for single wide, $125 for a double or triple wide. Our proposed is $125 per section. Um, moving buildings, our current permit fee is $200. Our proposed is $500. Demolition, our current and proposed is $100. It benefits the county to not um, increase that because that's a benefit to the county to get rid of derelict um, buildings. Um, site prep permits, our current is $50. Our proposed is $100. <coughs> Electrical upgrade, our current permit fees are $50. Um, our proposed is $100. Supplemental permits, such as power poles, electrical, gas, plumbing, HVAC, and roofing, our current is $50 each. We're proposing to go to $100 each. Um, Items based on contract cost would now require an official binding contract to determine the valuation that would be placed um, in the ICC data valuation calculator for a fee. Reroofs, swimming pools, pool enclosures, HVAC replacements, plumbing replacement, electrical rewiring, siding, renovations, telecommunications, cell towers, tower co-locations, um, those are items that's based on contract cost. Swimming pools will require plumbing and electrical supplemental fees, permits. Uh, for example, a re-roof permit, if the current value or contract on that um, is $5,000, our current permit fee would be $70. Proposed value $5,000, our permit fee would be um, $146.25. Our fine schedule for no permit, the permit fee would be doubled. They would be fined based on no permits posted working outside the scope of the current county registration, working without a license or current license, failure to appear before the construction industry licensing board when summoned, failure to properly be insured, liability, workers' comp insurance, or the exemption, 
um, no changes requested. Um, we just enforce those changes um, or enforce those fines. First offense will be 125, second offense 250, third offense 500, fourth offense suspension of license. Our inspection fine schedule. If you call for an inspection and it's not ready, this is for, per, for each job. Our current is first, our first offense is $25, second offense 50, third offense $100 with a two week wait. Our proposed is for our first offense is $50, second offense $100, Third offense, two hundred dollars with a two hundred—I mean, a two-week wait. Our neighbors are accustomed to the higher fees, as noted above in the ICC valuation data table. We are asking to be on the same level playing field. I believe this will help the building department's budget to be fully self-supporting, and would no longer um, have to rely on ad valorem taxes to pad our shortcomings. That would afford our department to purchase necessary items such as vehicles, computers, supporting programs that will keep our department running efficiently. It could also provide future raises for staff. Also, at the end of each fiscal year, if our budget had earnings over the allotted budget, the excess could be earmarked with capital improvements to cover times when the market um, declines <coughs> without relying on ad valorem taxes. Keep in mind the resolution submitted states current ICC data valuation data table so that when the table increases or decreases, a new resolution will not be required. We're asking for board action to approve the resolution today with an effective date of May 1st, 2020 as the official date to, to implement these changes. This will allow time for Mr. Altman, our intact permit program developer, time to create the ICC data valuation table calculator within our program. But stuff like this, that's the goal of having the department so they can be self-sufficient, right? That's, what that's I correct, think that yes, sir. And that's what we need to do. I mean, the good old days go. They take care of themselves. Pledge to the board. So move. We pass this entire idea. I got a motion on floor by Commissioner Burke. Second. Second by Commissioner Master. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. So, Mr. Chair, if you see what we just did going forward, we began to save the county taxpayers' money by having folks who use our county services pay for those services and we don't claw it away from tax money. That was a defining moment, I think, in today's county history to be able to see that happen. And thank you so much. Thank you. I'd like to see all the department take care of this, uh, yeah. if they could. <coughs> yeah, I could when I could. <laughs> All right, now we got the public here. Next on the agenda will be the public hearing. <coughs> Michael. Oh, okay. I think it's the public hearing. I'm sorry. Next on the agenda, you gonna run it? The public here? Mm -hmm. oh, Miss Amy gonna run it? As needed. She's doing real good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Miss Amy. Okay. Okay. This morning we have a consideration of a request for land use change of a 1.23 acre parcel from residential to commercial on property line in, in section two, township nine south, range eight west, section thirty and section thirty five. Township 8 South, Range 8 West, Apalachicola, Franklin County, Florida. Request submitted by Charles and Faye Thompson, applicant. Pleasure to vote. Public hearing or is there any public comment? Public comment. Okay, just a minute, sir. Yep. Okay. On this one, um, an ordinance amending the Franklin County Comprehensive Plan to change the permit <coughs> land use of a 1.23 acre parcel lying in Section 2, Township 9 South, 
Range 8 West, and Section 35, Township 8 South, Range 8 West, Apalachicola, Franklin County, Florida, from residential to commercial. And that's a separate one. Mm -hmm. All right, this is the public area of the land use. Okay. Public comment? Um, you're here for the land arc. Yeah. This is for a different public hearing, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So, Charles Thompson. Yes, Charles and Faye Thompson. This is the one for Mr. Charles and Faye Thompson. Any public comment on that? Public comment on Mr. Charles and Faye Thompson. Ms. Amy, do Please. you know where this is, uh, how this shows relative to residential around it? Yes, sir. I have the, um, the land use map. Um, here is the red dot is the the Thompson property in this area he has residential conservation commercial up on Bay City Road residential industrial and some public facilities where DW Wilson Park is located Mr. Chairman Go ahead. this is a this is a facility that has been here for a long time uh, long before I was elected as, as a commissioner. It's a storage facility, uh, uh, rental, rental storage. It's been there for a long time. It's been under home industry. Uh, and the gentleman is ready, to, at his age, is ready to uh, sell that. Uh, any any comments from the adjoining property owners, Ms. Amy? I have had no opposition, no comments, no phone calls. This, this, in other words, it was under home industry, and he wants to be able to sell this as he's getting up in age him and his wife and can no longer take care of it mm -hmm. so it's not like you're taking a piece of residential property and changing it to a commercial the use has already been there that's it it's not like they're going to build something it's already been built 20 something years ago i didn't know that and based on that i'm going to make a motion to approve so second got a motion on vote by commissioner Perry, second by commissioner jones and matt and all uh, commissioner burke burke yeah any more discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed that pass in that one. Okay. And um, this is the second part. This is the rezoning. It's an ordinance um, rezoning a 1.23 acre parcel lying in Section 2, Township 9 South, Range 8 West, and Section 35, Township 8 South, Range 8 West. Apalachicola, Franklin County, Florida, from R4 single family home industry to C2 commercial business. Page of the board. Public, public comments on this? Is there any public comment? Public comment. Page of the board. So moved. I got a motion on the floor. Second. By Commissioner Paris, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. Okay. Old then item 17 um, for William Simmons. It's a consideration of a request for a rezoning of a 22.77 acre parcel from R1 single family subdivision to R1 single family residential on property lying in section 35, township 7 south. Range 5 West, Carabelle, Franklin County, Florida. Request submitted by Dan Garlic, Garlic Environmental Associates, agent for William Simmons, applicant. And this is an ordinance rezoning a 22.77 acre parcel lying in section 35, Township 7 South, Range 5 West, Carabelle, Franklin County, Florida, from R1A single family subdivision to R1 single family residential. You had any calls on it? No, sir. Okay. I have no calls, emails. All right. So moved. Wait a minute. Public comment. Oh. Any public comments on that? On this one? This to be the William Simmons. Any public comment on the Simmons? Page of the board. So moved. Second. I got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Masses, second by Commissioner Burke. 
all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimously. Consideration of a request for a land use change from residential to commercial of a 5.8 acre parcel line in section 7, Township 7 South, Range 3 West, Lanark, Franklin County, Florida. Request submitted by Clayton Studstill, agent for Timothy Saunders and Christina Saunders, applicant. Um, yep. and then I'll read the land use um, an ordinance amending the Franklin County Comprehensive Plan to change the permitted land use of a 5.8 acre parcel lying in Section 7, Township 7 South, Range 3 West, Lanark, Franklin County, Florida, from residential to commercial. And I'll go ahead and read the rezoning as well. And I'll just read it from the ordinance. An ordinance rezoning a 5.8 acre parcel lying in Section 7, Township 7 South, Range 3 West, Lanark, Franklin County, Florida, from R1 single family residential to C4 mixed use residential. I'll have to correct that. Yes. Public comment. We got any public comments on this? this you got a bunch of them. Go ahead. Good morning. Clayton Studstill here on behalf of Christina Saunders and Timothy Saunders. Um, we have requested that this be conducted as a quasi judicial hearing and there is a court reporter here uh, attorney chris west and mark davis would also like to present and we have a planner here um, alana gutcher as well as uh, mr alday an engineer uh, thank you christina thank you mr chairman mm -hmm. mr christina Typically, what y'all would do is you would take public comment at the beginning uh, before you get into the testimony and the, the presentation, the data and analysis. I mean, how, how the board wants to run the public hearing. I mean, if you want to let them go first, you certainly can. But historically, you take public comment first, and then there's the presentation from, in this case, the applicant, uh, the, the county. Uh, I've spoken with, with Mr. Carrington, um, and, and the county is going to be present uh, to respond to questions from the board or questions from perhaps the audience but uh, the, the county does not have a presentation um, the presentation will come from the applicant and then whoever is in the audience if it wants to present other information to the board so having said that mr chairman do you want to allow the public comment to go first or do you want to allow the applicant to make their presentation first go on with the public comment yes sir. that would be my recommendation we go with the public comment public comment <clears throat> How much time do I have today? Usually three to five minutes. What is it? Three minutes. Three minutes. Would you please pass these out? To the if you, uh, yes. unless you represent a group. I just, I'm just an individual. Yeah. My name is Mike McLeod. I'm a resident, <clears throat> long-term resident and landowner here in the county, Lanark Village area. I've appeared with you before. I've written to you before. I'm totally against this rezoning land use change. I believe that it's uh, this change is is user driven. I believe this is de facto spot zoning and de facto land use change spot land use change <clears throat> for a user. The user that is proposed for this is five miles away from a brand new store. <clears throat> the photographs you have despite the developers comments that Dollar General pledges not to have a trashy environment that's what your new store looks like last Saturday so just so you know uh, this is going to open up zoning creep from the Putnell Road east to the St. James entry, um, subdivision the golf course you're going to have zoning creep and this is what your neighbors your guests, your uh, tourists are going to see as they come in from the east. The first thing they're going to see is a big yellow sign Dollar General store that looks just like the one I gave you a picture of. That's what they're going to see is a trashy store. 
this <clears throat> East Franklin County is the most pristine part of the county and you're about to trash it. People bought homes there. I bought property there because it's pristine. It's the prettiest part of the county and what's what they call the Forgotten Coast. So let's not forget what the Forgotten Coast is. I think that the commission generally ignores the county to the east, which is sort of a good thing until something like this comes up. The last thing is the rumor is that uh, what is the developer going to do who will own the property? I'm a retired developer. I don't blame him for what he's doing. I understand the deal. But what's going to be done with the excess property that's not under site plan approval for the Dollar General store? What happens to that property? I'd like to know, unless you're willing. Uh, in my opinion is the fix is in anyway, but if you're willing to restrict it and say this zoning, rezoning and land use is just for this user, that might be something we would look at. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Go ahead. Sir? Uh, you can look it up. Never mind. Never mind. Oh, we take the to come up with it. Yeah, we say it takes his in. I'm Mark Hopkins. My wife and I have a house at 2626 Highway 98 East out of Caribou, which is right across the street from this the property we're talking about here today. Um, you can't get any closer on that side of the road. I'm right there in my backyard. Um, been there since, the house has been there since 2003, three, yeah. So we've been, we've been there a good little while. Every time we've had one of these meetings, we've testified at it being against. I want to make it clear, we're against this only re, uh, request. Um, we've gone before the Planning and Zoning Commission. They did not approve or recommend approval of this proposal here. Um, the developer has testified that don't blame him. He, you know, we, we, he didn't approve it. The realtor did, uh, select the property. The realtor didn't either. He says that corporate officers selected it based on their photograph, I think. And they're in uh, some other state. They may even been in China, I don't know. Carolinas and, and, or China. And so we have to deal with it. They did not consider adjacent owners. The best I can tell, they, didn't, they certainly didn't know there's a neighborhood there that we're trying to protect. Uh, I certainly agree with what previous uh, Mike McLeod <coughs> said, every bit of what he said. Um, so they selected it based somewhere else on the parameters they were looking for, which is a major highway, uh, and it was the right distance from everywhere in the city of Warner right there. I guess that's, what, that's what's been told to us. <coughs> Now, it's easy to predict that if this proposal for land use change is voted in by the commission, uh, Dollar General isn't the only, only issue here. Uh, me being a landowner, I'm just worried about what comes later. Uh, we're going to have an RV park. Other high density land uses, I think y'all probably got a better idea of that than I do. But uh, in effect, we'd have a strip mall. We will have a strip mall after five, ten years along US 98 if y'all approve this. Hopefully, you do not want to allow that. And I hope you'll join with uh, our neighborhood residents in uh, being against this uh, request. You know, this, this uh, logic that I've just used, going to be a strip mall, is exactly the same logic that 
the developer is probably using with you, which is Putnam property is uh, zoned commercial. Well, I tell you, there's a difference between theory and, and actual. Uh, I can I can testify that the uh, I can go back 50 years. Your time up, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Tanya Putnell. I'm here on behalf of my husband Jeremy and our children. We own the property at Putnell Lanark Station. I have resided there for 20 years. He's been there for 43. Um, we, do, we do not want any commercial development in Gulf Terrace or St. James, either one. Uh, the people of Gulf Terrace and St. James also do not want any commercial development in our community. We want to continue to keep our peace and quiet tranquility and treasure the patina that scenic 98 currently holds um, so we just come to y'all today to ask you to please honor our wishes and continuing to keep our community as peaceful as we can thank you Good morning, gentlemen. My name is Greg Broughton. In December of 2019, we moved to Carabelle. We did our due diligence. We looked all around. What an amazing place. Absolutely gorgeous. The first night my wife and I moved in, we sat there and we looked at each other and we go, listen, we didn't hear anything. The peacefulness. We walked outside and looked at the million stars in the skies. We did our due diligence. We didn't know about Dollar General possibly going in. So I would ask you this. Everybody in this room, death, taxes, and retirement. We just retired to come down here. You guys at some point are going to retire also. Do you want a Dollar General next to your home? Do you, or do you want peacefulness? Well, shouldn't at the end of the day this really be up to the residents to make this decision? Shouldn't it? We live there. We should have that. And with the noise pollution and everything that's coming with this, guys, just ask yourself, walk in my shoes for a minute and ask yourself, do you want this here? And I can tell you, could probably even answer for you, and the answer is no. Plus, as I said, there's one five miles up the road. So all we're asking is for you to look at this and say, okay, I'm going to be you for a minute. Let me make the decision. And that's how I feel. Thank you for your time. Very much appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Deborah Scamlin. I'm the manager of the Lanark Market. I'm not the one that should be here today, but so many people that wanted to be here can't come because we're working. I was lucky enough to get somebody to trade shifts with me. Lanark Market, the IGA, and the new dollar store. Their businesses are going to be hurt because of this. And there are, I think, like 26 employees at the dollars. I mean, at the IGA. I don't know how many at the dollar store. I've got five. Uh, this, Sharon and Tim, the owners, would be here today, except they're having to work their other jobs because this time of year, the store doesn't make enough money to pay the bills. Plus, they just bought it in June of last year. So they got the, uh, you know, some extra expenses for a new business. They're, they're working, they can't be here, so I'm here representing them. The IGA manager couldn't be here because he's in a meeting, and the assistant manager couldn't be here because he's got to be there to take care of vendors. And there's quite a few people in the community that wanted to be here that couldn't show up because they're working today. Now, the last time I talked at planning and zoning, I made a statement that a lot of the information I'm going to present was found on the Internet, and everybody just kind of laughed. Well, listen, I'm using the U.S. government's archives. So if that's a laughing matter, the Dollar General is owned by um, KKR, Goldman Sachs, and China. Their number one sourcing office in China. They have over 1,000 factories in China. And the, the China Law Group 
which has looked at four of these factories, can tell you that the working conditions there are nothing we would put up with. Many of the employees have to work over 300 hours in the factories that are dormitory style factories. They're treated badly, they're not paid overtime for unbelievably low wages and grueling working conditions. Another thing is this dollar store. There's a brand new one. Everybody's telling you there's a brand new one. And the meeting they had out at St. James Bay, they talked about they counted the rooftops to justify the location there. The new dollar store also counted those rooftops. And in Lanark, at least one third of the homes sit empty all the time. Probably another 20% are vacation homes where you only have people on weekends. So if they're justifying this, the Dollar General Headquarters, they may be not justifying correctly. Um, they're gonna say that they're gonna bring jobs to the community. I've checked on the jobs and the, what they pay. Even our little store pays more than what they're gonna be paying their employees. Um, I can't imagine what the neighbors that live in that area have just woken up to the reality that they're gonna have, living in a pristine environment, they're gonna wake up and they're gonna have a dollar store with the shopping carts and the 18 wheelers and, and all that goes on with the trash that blows off from there next to the flats, which is a very sensitive environmental commute area. We have grass under the water there. <coughs> it's very sensitive to any pollution that will be there. They were talking about they'd have to raise the elevation five feet to build the store there. If they do that, there are underwater aquifers there, creeks there that run year round. These aren't just drainage creeks that will be affected by the compression and the buildup of the property there. Um, I'm sure all of you have been through this area, the ospreys, the eagles, the bears, the foxes, all that run through there. You know, we realize we're gonna lose some of that um, with the, the forest that's been cut there, the silt that's built up on the grasses is finally washed away and it looks like we may get scallops this year. FWC is planning to help seed scallops and have uh, people babysitting in the area scallops so we can seed out there and hopefully get them growing again. What if, say, they do end up putting an RV park across the road because you've opened up planning and zoning, they're gonna cover that lot with limestone. Limestone runs into the water and it deletes the oxygen in the water. I know this because I was a zookeeper. We had a couple acre pond. We just poured a little bit of a concrete edge around the upper part of the pond. I had koi in there and I lost 200 koi. So you know, I know a little bit about what kind of effect building can have on the natural environment there. And Ma'am, your time up. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> My name is Bill Meichler. I reside at 2606 Highway 98 East. It's across the street from the subject property. I want to first talk about the the nature of our neighborhood and the land use thereof. Our neighborhood is very pristine. It's been described by someone that we all know. If you take the drive from the bridge at Panacea across the Forgotten Coast Highway, you get into the area where you've got very pristine, uh, I, I just can't tell you, you'd have to sit on my front porch to understand. Uh, but you drive across and you, you pass this little quaint uh, Catholic church. It, it's really neat. And then you make the slight curve and bang, or you want to be in a commercial zone. Is that what we want our tourists that come here to spend money uh, for? But it's the land use change and the ultimate use of it. I'm, I'm not gonna comment, it's been very well described about the proposed use, but this is what we do in our neighborhood. We listen to the mullet jump, not door slam. 
we have the stars we look at without the, the obstruction or, or the effect of ambient light. Ambient light will take away half of our stars. Uh, and as far as nature is concerned, I've got pictures of bears and foxes and bobcats and turkeys and deer uh, and bears and bears. Uh, but this is a description of how we live over there, just like living in the country. We're five miles away from town. Well, when we go to town, we got a list. Now, where are we going to go? We're going to go to the IGA or the Dollar General or the bank or the, the uh, Ace Hardware, the Ander Hardware, any, any number of stores that you, you want to <coughs> talk about. But we take care of all of that there. We've existed this long in Franklin County in Gulf Terrace, Lanark, without the, the, uh, uh, the existence of commercial property in our neighborhood. Commercial property is being proposed because, only because, that there's a, a commercial spot that was historically, not deliberately through this process, that was grandfathered. It's not been operated in, in uh, since 1992 as a commercial establishment. Uh, and there are, as I know, no plan to resume commercial op operations on that property uh, in the near future. Uh, I've collected signatures and I've given them to Amy. Uh, there's a lot of signatures of people that have signed petitions and letters in protest I'm not, I haven't even counted the signatures, but there are quite a few that it might even uh, approach the, the uh, population of the Lanark Village itself. Uh, there are people that are for it, no problem with them, but uh, we're, we're here without an attorney today. We, we wanted the file, we, couldn't, we did not receive the file. The attorney said you need all the records and we don't have the records, therefore we're not represented. Uh, we just represent ourselves, and, and that's it. But, but given, the, um, given the neighborhood that we have, it, and it's a neighborhood. It's, U.S. 98 does not, that's not the Chinese wall. It's a whole neighborhood, Gulfside, Inland. Uh, but as far as the zoning change is concerned, and, and I'll go back to the, do you want this in, in your own backyard or step outside your role, and I appreciate your role as, as a commission looking after the whole county, but it meets the definition in my mind of spot zoning because what you're doing is putting a commercial zone in a neighborhood. It's a neighborhood. It's not just a strip along 98. Uh, but there's, we have, we have invested, the, the, the Pope people down here have invested millions of dollars in having this pristine. We wouldn't have done, we wouldn't have bought property if the Dollar General was there and the other gentleman said the same thing. So we're gonna have to go back to go to the board of adjustment because our property is gonna be devalued. Yes, property taxes will be gained in a commercial di district, but partially offset because we fully anticipate that we can't get anywhere close to the money that we put in the house for the purchase and for the repairs from the hurricane, which were significant. Your time up, sir. Thank you very much. Sure. Good morning, gentlemen. My name is George Baldwin. I own an adjacent property. Um, when I came to purchase property here, I looked at the county planning documents. The county planning documents told me that this was a homeowner's kind of place. 
And I want you all, if you could, to keep it a homeowner's kind of place. The question that you have now is simply whether or not you're going to change the zoning. Please don't change the zoning that it currently is. You're impacting people who've looked at the zoning, who've made a choice to purchase, and have depended on the county's good faith to maintain that environment. So I request that you deny the change. Thank you. Thank you. Public comment. Public comments. I guess that's that's all the public comments. That appears to be so, Mr. Chairman. Um, ordinarily, you would have uh, in our last few public hearings on rezoning and land use, you would have some organized group. Sometimes they're represented by an attorney. Sometimes they're just one person in opposition. Um, I'm not aware, and I did talk to county staff, I'm not aware of anyone who was going to be presenting any, like a 20 minute presentation, which is what you've allowed in the past after public comment. So there, there won't be any organized person that I'm aware of providing information, data and analysis uh, to the board in opposition. But I understand that the applicant has, as you heard from attorney Studstill initially, they have some experts that they want uh, to present information, data, and analysis to the board. Now would be the time to take that information. Um, and, and just so that all the attorneys are aware, uh, the, the county's policy is we, we do not take sworn testimony during these QJ hearings. Uh, the public comment is unsworn. And then the, the data and analysis coming from, uh, in this case, the, the applicant's uh, experts would also be unsworn as well. So, Mr. Studstill, you have the floor or whomever's presenting. But you do have 20 minutes, gentlemen. <coughs> Good morning, commissioners. Good My morning. husband and I purchased our property in Lanark. Let me get a name for the record, please. Christina Saunders. 20 minutes total. My husband and I purchased our property in Lanark in 1980, moved here in 1985, built a home and started a life here. We have seen many changes, some good, some bad. We have noticed the decline of businesses coming to this area. Here are a list of businesses that have been closed or gone, starting from the east and working west. Marthan's Restaurant Motel, gone. Lannis has changed to condos. Putnell's Lanark Station, closed. The Village Shopping Mall closed. It had doctor's offices, laundromat, thrift store, and a restaurant. The club up in the village closed. The junior store closed, then turned into a restaurant. Now that is closed. Gulf Waters Motel, gone and changed to residential. Restaurant located in Gulf Waters Motel, gone. RV Park near Ho-Hum, gone, changed to residential. Island View Motel, the mobile home, and RV park across from Island View and Ells Court, gone and changed to a park. Eleven businesses in the area that provided jobs, all gone. We are asking to change the zoning from residential to commercial so the proposed building, Dollar General, can buy jobs in the community and support the citizens in the eastern part of the county. The property west of ours is already commercial so I would not consider this spot zoning. We own one and a half acres across the street from the zoning that is residential. It will provide a good tax base for the county and a good revenue for Carabell's water department. I think it will be beneficial for the county and the community to have the proposed general store in the area. 11 businesses that was commercial on Highway 98 that has never been replaced. I think it's time to see a commercial business come in to replace what we have lost. It's up to you, the commissioners, to decide this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning. 
Chris West, I uh, represent Terramore Development. My address is uh, 165 Big Star Drive, Thomasville, Georgia. Um, we have worked from the outset of this project to determine what the code is, to meet the code, to see that, see that we meet the code, to meet with the residents, to see if we can have a project that um, meets the con any concerns of, of, of neighboring residents and also fulfills the, the needs of the shoppers in the area and also for the folks that do not have jobs, that don't have uh, economic opportunities in the area. This, this project will provide about 10 jobs. Uh, four of those will be full time for the folks over there. Now, if you're a property owner and you're retired and you've got a nest egg, like a lot of these folks here this morning, that doesn't concern you. You're, you're, you're retired and you're good. But for that single mom that maybe has two kids and maybe struggling to make ends meet, she may be able to use a decent job. She maybe she doesn't want to drive five miles and five miles back to with kids in the car and having to, to go get a, a gallon of milk when she maybe can get it a couple of miles closer. Our Constitution, both in the United States and as well as Florida, pr protects people's rights to life, liberty, and property. And that's the folks here, and that's also the, the um, Ms. Saunders, she has the right to be able to do with her property as she chooses. Um, that's not, sometimes that right affects the majority. Well, our Constitution doesn't always do with, it's an individual right, that right help, but that, that our Constitution protects. That same Constitution protects the rights of the, the, the single mom or the folks that are struggling that maybe don't want to drive five miles to, to get groceries. And that's what, that's what we are doing here this morning and that's what the county has done with setting code that protects constitutional, these constitutional rights that are you know, inalienable. You know, for, um, the, our founding documents, are, which are, are sacred to all of us. And, and meeting code and determining what code is and meeting code, if we do, which I believe that our experts will say that we do in fact meet code, it's this, this board has determined what the code is, it's already been predetermined. If we meet it, then we have the, the opportunity to be able to, to exercise our rights with our property. Um, I, one of the things that was mentioned is, is this a, uh, is this a neighborhood, is a bill of a neighborhood? And I would just remind uh, the board that we all know 98 is a, is a very busy highway. According to um, Florida DOT records, in front of our sites, thirty, a little over 3,400 trips a day, 3,400 vehicles a day across 98. Um, as has been stated, the property adjacent to us is uh, it, the existing zoning is uh, it's already commercial. And I want to, if I may, have like the folks and present the photo of what the the property looks like now. And I'll tender this uh, to Heather. This uh, this is facing the property, and this is this is the, the landmark uh, uh, the put the Putnam store right here. Mm -hmm. What the Putnam store looks like right now. Mm -hmm. And what we're proposing do we have to that? do? We can put it on the projector. Do not. Okay. What we're proposing to build is about a million and a half dollar investment. I mean, a million million dollar investment this property. Now, in, in speaking with the residents, we made certain upgrades uh, with the, the, the paneling, the, the, the lighting to make sure it's facing downward, not to <coughs> pollute off the site to, to harm or to offend the neighbors. Uh, the, the entrance way is, is dressed up. So it's uh, the, the shutters uh, just provide a state better look. Uh, so <coughs> this um, we we were spending our dollars and trying to be good neighbors uh, to, to help dress the, to dress the store up to, to, make, it look, to make it look presentable. Uh, additionally, I, I would just uh, add that as a benefit to the county, that as, a, as the citizens as a whole, that this project is going to derive uh, extensive tax benefits to the residents at large in the county to be able to, to provide services throughout the county. A store of this size should generate around eighty thousand dollars a year in taxable revenue to go into uh, to the county budget. Um, that's not including the increase in this project, in this 
property down to war on tax, which will also, over the life of the project, be, be extensive. Uh, with that, I will um, I'll tender it back over, and if there are, later if there are any particular questions, uh, be happy to answer those. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Mark Davis. I'm an attorney with Clark Partington, and I was Walton County attorney for a, no, probably too long, and uh, conducted probably a thousand quasi-judicial hearings in a five-year, four and a half-year period. Uh, I'm going to introduce Alara Mills Gutch Gutcher. I always say her name wrong. She's a planner, and we're going to tender her as an expert. I have uh, copied her curriculum vitae or resume, uh, and. Uh, I will tell you she's testified as an expert before multiple county commissions and multiple city commissions uh, regarding land use. Uh, she's well known in, in planning circles and she's going to uh, testify to you or, or give you comments here briefly. Yeah. And, and typically we ask the commission to accept her as an expert uh, with her curriculum vitae. I, I would ask the county attorney to recommend that Mr. Lockley, the chairman, accept her as an expert. I have read her CV. I can go over my credentials if, briefly if, if you need them for the record. Yes, if you would, that'd be fine. Hi. I didn't have a chance to talk beforehand. So sure. Sorry. Good morning. My name is Alara Mills Gutcher. I Good am morning. a land use planner who's certified by the American Institute of Certified Planners. I have been since 2001. I work throughout Northwest Florida. I have worked for local governments such as Panama City and Gadsden County and Bay County. I have worked for private sector and uh, I currently own my own company. I have been in the profession for 23 years. I um, have worked on several or hundreds actually of land use amendments and rezonings. I have worked on large scale projects that have been a statewide initiative um, down to grassroots community efforts. I have a bachelor's degree from Florida State and my master's degree is in regional and city planning from the University of Oklahoma. And she works with David Theriac too. I will see that on her CV. I do. So uh, just to ask that you accept me as an expert witness for this purpose. Yes, I would make that recommendation, Mr. Chairman. Okay, is it a bold? Yeah. I, I don't think you need to do it by motion. Just we don't? Okay. Think well, we accept you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. So I think in your packets, um, at least last week, I submitted an analysis for the future land, land use map and zoning change request for this parcel. Um, I went through and did an analysis of existing conditions. You also have a handout that staff provided that asks us to look at certain, um, certain uh, data that's available out there, which I did and included in the report. Um, I conducted a site visit in preparation of the report. Uh, I went through the property appraiser's website. I looked at the comprehensive plan that you have adopted and your zoning code. Um, I looked at your future land use map and I did some consultation with, um, with staff and with my client, Terramore Development. Um, I also looked to the statutory definition of compatibility, which I'll read into the record. Compatibility means a condition in which land uses or conditions can coexist in relative proximity to each other, <clears throat> excuse me, in a stable fashion over time, such that no use or condition is unduly negatively impacted directly or indirectly by another use or condition. So those are the some of the um, parameters that I look at when I'm looking at a site like this for compatibility. So uh, I think we've understood where the site is and the location, so I won't go over that again. Um, but some of the data that your staff handed out to ask me to look at, I did include in the report. Um, some of those included um, the wetlands. There are some wetlands on the site, but not a forested wetland. There is a, a ditch that exists on the western portion of the parcel. Um, I don't believe your staff in, uh, for, with a verbal conversation or an email um, consider that as one that would require a 150-foot setback. Um, there is some flood zone on the parcel towards the front. Uh, this is, has to do with um, the, and also the coastal high hazard area that comes up north of 98. Um, it also asks us if the property is inside the East Point Urban Service Area, and it is not. It is farther east than that. And um, we looked at soils. There is a geotech exploration report for the Dollar General. 
It is, uh, so we do have a soils report in there. There is Linhaven sand, Leon sand, and man, <coughs> excuse me, mandarin sand, fine sand on the site. The site is relatively flat and suitable for development of this type. So there was also a request to look at bald eagle nesting locations, which I did, I went to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission website, and that um, figure is located in the report that's before you. The closest bald eagle site is about uh, five miles to the east. Adjacent uses include the Lanark, the abandoned Lanark station, which was once a commercial use and is currently commercial on your future land use map, and uh, single family residential. There is also vacant surrounding the site. Um, to the south, there is some vacant and, um, uh, and, and close by. So I also look to your comprehensive plan and the existing use is residential. We are asking for a commercial future land use designation. Um, there are policies that refer to looking at traffic and your traffic counts, which I did. If you look to page 13 of the report, there is a peak hour trip generation analysis for a store of this type and uh, shows that we will not exceed any level of service standards that you have adopted for transportation. Uh, the zoning we're re requesting is to go from the single family residential R1 to the mixed use residential C4, which will allow this type of use. There is also an analysis on page 14 that shows the zoning district regulations, the maximum densities, the maximum floor area ratios, the maximum height and pervious surface, the minimum lot size requirements per year code, the minimum lot frontage per year code, and the minimum lot depths. And those are listed um, in tab tabular form. I also looked at the minimum bulk regulation standards compared to the plan for development, which is for the um, 10,640 square foot variety store or a dollar general as we've been calling it. That's on page 15 of the report. And to show that the maximum height that the district allows is higher than what the structure will be. So the structure will actually be less tall or lower than the maximum height limitation <coughs> of the parameters of your adopted documents. The maximum impervious surface will be much less than the maximum of the zoning district. 80% um, is your max and we're proposing about 20% of the site to be impervious surface. And again, our setbacks are very great. As you can see, um, I think you also have received a site plan layout your setbacks are required to be 25 feet in the front, 10 feet on the rear, and 10 feet on each side. And we propose those to be much greater in uh, over 100 feet in each case. Other exhibits that are attached to the... I'm going to interrupt you for just a okay. minute. Just so we can get to the meat of it, I'm going to ask her a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Um, Ms. Gutschner, is it your opinion that this... Uh, requested zoning and comprehensive plan change meet all the requirements of the Franklin County Land Development Code and comprehensive plan? Yes, they do meet the requirements and are consistent with all of the policies of the comprehensive plan and the land development, the zoning code that they call it. And there was a question about whether or not the proposal was spot zoning. Can you tell us what your opinion is of that? Yeah, I, I don't believe it's spot zoning primarily because there is commercial on your map already to the west of the subject parcel. Um, also, spot zoning has a lot to do with um, compatibility, which I talked about first in my presentation. And um, this development, with your setbacks, with your height limitations, with all the parameters I mentioned in your zoning code, that this, this box falls within those maximums, it, it would be, and the buffering requirements would make it a compatible development. And does it meet the statutory definition for compatibility? Yes. Both the land use change and the comprehensive plan, uh, yes. plan change. Yes, and the plan for development, And yes. just so the commission's clear, there is no uh, Franklin County definition of compatibility in the land development code in Franklin County, correct? There's not one in the comprehensive plan or the land zoning, the zoning code is what they call so it. So you're required to rely on the statutory definition? I did. Uh, that's all the questions I have. We also, do you, no, I'm good. We also have our engineer on the project here. If you have any, uh, he might want to say a couple of things, Mr. Alday. Just we have about three minutes. Okay, uh, Joseph Alday, Alday Hall Engineering. Um, I've, uh, we're an engineering firm out of Mariana, Florida. We since 2006, we've been doing these Dollar General projects. Basically, at this point, we've met with DOT. 
a pre-submittal meeting. We've got conceptual approval for the driveway connection. Um, as Alara alluded to, uh, our client has already had geotech engineers on the property. They've done soil borings. They've looked at the um, the material, and uh, has have, it is suitable material for uh, the development of the of the site as a Dollar General. We've also had a biologist. Okay. Um, do uh, wetlands uh, look for endangered species, listed species, um, and the only thing that was discovered was the ditch on the west side of the property, as Alara alluded to. And just briefly, give, give the commission your background, your education background and licensing. Okay, I've got a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from Florida State University. I've been a professional engineer since, I believe it's 2002. Um, um, and I just had one question for him, if I could. You, you've looked at the stormwater runoff issues. Well, that, there was some concerns about this site maybe polluting uh, waterways or uh, wetlands. Do you have any concerns about that? No, especially with the size of the site, we should, uh, we'll be able to meet the water quality and uh, quantity rate control requirements of the, of the state and the local requirements. So both the, the stormwater requirements will be met by this project? Yes. Okay. And Mr. Attorney, we would also ask that the engineer be accepted as an expert. Since 2002, yes, I think that's appropriate. He's accepted as an expert on my recommendation to the board. You accept it, sir. And, and commissioners, just one quick closing comment. Um, I, I've done projects with these folks in various parts of Northwest Florida. Uh, I, I will tell you this. Um, I, I've conducted, as I said, hundreds of these QJs in Walton County. As a county attorney, people who support these projects never show up. It, it's it's just the way it is. It's just human nature. Uh, these are, these folks are good citizens. They're good neighbors. Uh, they they work to ameliorate concerns, and I think you heard from Mr. West that he's done that both with his uh, with the design of the building. Uh, but the in a quasi judicial hearing, the most important thing you've heard today is you have expert opinions, and I don't think your staff would disagree that this project, this proposed change in the land use and the comprehensive plan meets the requirements of the code and the comprehensive plan. And that's the determination you need to make. And if you do make that determination, you should approve the land use change and the comp plan change. Staff have any recommendation? No recommendation, okay. Mr. Chairman, that would conclude the uh, presentation uh, just spoke with Mr. Chair, he, he does not have anything to add to the presentation that, that you've heard here this morning he doesn't have anything uh, the recommendation apparently uh, is not coming from staff so um, I, I think you are at a procedural point now that if y'all have any questions either for the applicant or for Mr. Carrington that would be a time uh, for you to pose those questions uh, if you have no questions that you want to have answered now is the time for, for the board to discuss this matter among <coughs> yourselves. If you have any questions for me, now is also the appropriate time to ask me any questions. Discussion. I have several questions if you guys want to go. Um, just to uh, whoever is um, composing the application, on page 6 of 24 of the application, under the available specific data to the site, it says in paragraph two that there is a ditch that's located on the eastern edge of the parcel boundary. Two presenters did say that that ditch is on the western side, which is where it is, and that that is an error in the uh, report, that it's not on the eastern side, it's on the western side. So I would like to um, uh, cascade that question a little bit more, that on that western side of that property, that ditch <coughs> is located, it's also located next to the historic Putnam Market. The Putnam Market, as I understand it, was involved in petroleum products for years as part of its commercial endeavor. And I uh, am not a geotechnical expert at all, but I, I do um, yield to um, opinion of the experts here. I wonder if um, petroleum has uh, creeped and seeped from that pet Putnam Market relative to the water that's in that ditch that you showed in the wrong direction. That ditch is on the west side, not the east, as you say. And I'm, one, I'm worried about the fact that there's pollution on that property as a result of us missing the point of where that ditch is located. I have several follow-up questions. 
Chris West again for Terramore Development. We did uh, environmental studies on the front end, and um, I don't remember the firm, but we did we did get a clean report on our site as, as being free from environmental contaminants. Environmental contaminants, but specifically, are we talking about geotechnical soil geology, dirt? Cor oil? Correct. That, yes, sir. That's that's correct. And petroleum would be would are included within the the contaminants that they look for. And uh, so that would include, when I say it's clean, that would include. Uh, and so your samples area. went west on that property. Do you have do you have samples on that border area near the Putnam property? I couldn't speak as to where they would have done the sampling, but when the uh, when they give us a clean report, then they're certifying that the entire boundary uh, of, of the, the entire compass, the entire property is being cleaned. Okay, uh, and I do respect your opinion. Uh, I, I just wonder if they read what I read, um, where the, the uh, error is written in your report that the ditch is located on the eastern edge of the partial boundary. So the, the environmental firm would not have had uh, access or any particular reason to review this report. They're just they're giving a, a survey of the property and, and just take off from the, okay. the entire Thank boundary. You. I have some more questions. There's, when you walk the property as I did, there is also uh, a what appears to be a manhole type construction uh, item that's on the western side of that property. It's probably maybe a hundred feet or so landward of the center line of Route 98. And that manhole construction is a, an aperture that seems to be about three feet in diameter open. It's, it's bricked in at the sub level below the soil level. And that manhole structure also has two rusted ladder rungs going down into it to a depth of approximately four feet. And uh, that's an amazing aperture there. And I'm wondering if you have any studies on what that is and what it's supposed to be. I don't have the, the survey with me, but if my memory serves me correctly, and I'm pretty sure it does, and I think you have a copy of the survey, but uh, DOT, there's basically a storm drain pipe that's stubbed into that ditch. And that's why if you, if you drive by the road, you don't really notice the ditch. You have to walk into the property because that ditch goes into that structure uh, based on what the, the survey shows. It, again, it just seems like a... Uh, a real antique relic that's there. I'm not even sure how functional it is and what the purpose of it is, but I took a photograph of it and uh, thought it was just uh, interesting how it served that ditch. Yeah, it's, it's basically part of DOT's drainage system. I see. It doesn't appear to be functional or anything. It, it, from what I can, it looks like it's filled up with sediment, and there are two um, PVC pipes that are sticking into the hole with approximately four or five inches in diameter piece. Yeah, not sure. to be honest with you, it's not, that's not uncommon. Um, you know, maintenance is one of the biggest issues in sure. uh, in, in all storm drain systems around Florida and in the, in the country. But you know, they, they really become relevant whenever uh, you get a lot of rain and, and places start to flood. And you know, this may be because of the sandy soils in the area. It's just not an issue with with water coming to 98. It's just a wonderment. Um, can anybody tell me, has the applicant really done their due diligence in working with the Putnell family to come up with documented interviews and time with the Putnell family to talk about the applicant procuring the already existed zoning of commercial on the Putnell property? We have a biography of that or anything you can tell me about? Welcome today, but I'll do the best I can. Thank you, Jamie. Um, when we approached um, this area to purchase, for the sorry, yeah, please, James Lawrence um, I'm from Thomasville, Georgia, um, work for um, the developer. Um, when we approached this area to look for property, um, the number one A property would have been the Putnell property because it's zoned commercial. Therefore, um, when we're going and, and looking for property, we get local real estate agents to go and knock on doors or call on the people because it makes a familiar face, you know, where we can, so they can talk to them. Um, in this case, um, I have a um, 
local real estate agent. Um, she actually contacted another real estate agent that knew the Putnells and asked if they would sell the property. And at that time, they refused to sell the property. Um, with that refusal, we moved to the property to the, the property in question today, and they agreed to the property. And after looking at this property, with the extensive acreage of this property, it made a lot more sense. <coughs> and with the question mark of contamination of the old Putnell gas station, it made even more sense. Um, I think a lot of people know that um, further on down the line, um, there has been a history with the Putnells and our surveyors, and I don't want to get into a depth of that, but you can easily see they're not willing to sell. Mm -hmm. They may say that no one's ever approached them, but that's, that's false also. Okay. Thank you. So uh, what, what I was looking for was, is, and I appreciate your comments, um, I'm looking for something more anecdotal, less anecdotal, and more concrete. We went to the Putnells, we did it on this date, we offered this, here's a letter, here's their response, and it's all silent in terms of your full due diligence of trying to get that piece of commercial property relative to anything else before you began this. I do understand that the sociology of the whole issue and the dynamics of families and so on and that whole thing, but for the sake of zoning, I wanted to make sure that you really did get a, well, you, see, you, you went to them and you saw who blinked first. Did you offer the price? Did you offer the property that you wanted to buy it? And you now can give us documentation that they said absolutely not, never. At that point, you move into what we are seeing today. I don't hear that yet. Well, the local real estate agent approached them and they said no. And that's that. usually how we conduct business. Because if we go and we pry or we put a piece of paper in front of them, you know, it, it doesn't usually get anywhere. I know. But we could we could start throwing out money figures to people, and maybe they would convince. But sure, Mr. Putnell fired an AR-15 over our surveyors' heads because of the Dollar General case. Pretty sure he doesn't want us. I understand that. I, I, I know. But you know, I, I, and again, I'm not into the sociology of this. But but the. But I, I'd I'm like sorry, you to have eliminated this a little bit more formally than what I'm hearing. I understand. Um, I am sociologically involved in this and it has put a big damper on how I'll conduct business in future of everything that happened these surveyors will never conduct business the same way and I'll never be able to conduct service the same way and I'm so glad I didn't take that piece of paper that day and offer him I'm glad I did the route I did and I'm sorry mm -hmm. that it may not stand up with any kind of written proof but that's just what happened and looking sure. back I'm glad I decided to do the way I did I understand. I appreciate that very much, too. Uh, the other question I have is, is that uh, we're here to uh, consider 7.4 acres of property. Um, that includes uh, 2.8 acres across the street. And aren't, aren't we approving all of that in this? Or that other 2.8 acres stands alone in, um, it'll stay as residential across the street? Because it was, it was not clear to me in the application that we're, it Excuse sounded me. like we're bundling everything together. We, Mr. Chairman, I'm reviewing the ordinances that have been prepared by your county staff and they reflect a 5.88 acre parcel, more or less, and the maps are all showing that that 5.88 acre parcel of land is north of Highway 98. Yes, all of the above. But, Yes, Doesn't that land? Okay, it, so that's all we're approving is that gray area, then, or we're considering them. That's it. That is correct, okay. Commissioner. Now, with regard to traffic studies on Route 98, um, I understand that there's um, acceleration permission as you go from the west to the east, leaving Lanark, and you're heading east you exit a 45 mile an hour speed zone and enter a 55 mile an hour speed zone that roars right by that property. Is, is that correct? So given that correction, um, I saw your traffic count studies and so on, but there appears to be um, so much more activity going on right here at that, at that 10,000 square foot building where we have not seen any plans for how you're gonna manage traffic egress and ingress off of that property, turning lanes. What 
testimony do you have from D DOT with regard to this plan? I'd be interested in knowing if DOT has enough shoulder on each side to do anything from a turn lane standpoint. This, this is email confirmation from DOT on the recent middle meeting. Do you have a copy for everyone? Yeah, I have 10 copies here. Okay, that'd be fine. I have my points. So basically what, what we're passing out is email correspondence between myself and DOT. Um, as stated, we had a pre-submittal meeting with DOT. Uh, as a part of that pre-submittal meeting, we, we submit uh, right and left, left turn lane warrant analysis. Um, and basically that analysis is, is to consider if the, if the proposed traffic versus the existing traffic warrants um, deceleration lanes, acceleration lanes, left turn lanes, right turn lanes, and um, basically it ca we came to the conclusion that it is not warranted. DOT reviewed the data. Um, they, they confirmed as well, um, and just a typical driveway connection uh, is what's needed for this type of project. Did they consider traffic studies relative to seasonal traffic? As we see, our high season begins around March or April with a, uh, lots of uh, tourists and campers and all kinds of activity that's increasing in the spring and summer months as opposed to the fall and winter. Do we have seasonal traffic counts focused? Yeah, the, the DOT data, um, you know, they have count stations all around the county and um, they, they look at the average vehicle trips and then they also have peaking factors that you apply to that, those uh, averages. and. To, to do the peak hour, which is what we use for our, our turn lane analysis, we use those peaking factors. Okay. Um, I guess just subjectively now, th these, these are just, uh, just general observations. Um, <coughs> I've noticed that your site plan does show the parking in front of the Dollar General store with the headlights pointing uh, across the street in US 98 and into the residences that are across the street there. The headlights of everybody that will be parking there in the nighttime. Now, I'm, perhaps you'll be able to buffer that with uh, a very dense hedge. Um, I don't know what that'll be, but I was concerned about how the parking is shown pointing headlights directly into the neighborhood across the street. And um, I also have observed, uh, as I did this morning, driving by one of your Dollar General stores in Carabelle, uh, here's what I observed. There were two commercial vehicles in, uh, serving that Dollar General. One of them um, was a, um, a store that delivered, I think, um, restaurant-type products and so on, and it was parked on the private property west, uh, east of the, uh, of the store. It was, in other words, it wasn't on the store's own property, it was on the other, and somebody else's property and there was an 18 wheeler backed in to service the store and again I, I, I get concerned about uh, the concern of planning and, and mobile move, mobilization of trucks and equipment uh, that little landmark market alone has uh, I think eight or ten maybe up to twelve deliveries a week just in, in it and I'm wondering have you planned on traffic flow of your trucks and supplies See if I can answer this. Um, the and then I'll let Chris talk about the landscaping. On this particular project, and I'm not exactly sure if you went by the Carabelle store. Is that the one you're referring yes, to? Okay. Um, to be clear, we're not the developers on that. I understand. Um, I'd have to go back and look. Now this one will be curved and guttered, so everything will be curved out. Yep. Therefore, the trucks won't be able to encroach on the adjacent property or whatnot. Okay. We do have extensive extensive acreage here on both sides. So if something happened and they jumped the curve, mm -hmm. um, hopefully they'd never do that. It would still mm -hmm. be our property. But um, this, this particular development is a little unique because the drive, um, the, um, drive aisle coming into the store is longer. And um, that was one thing that um, DOT 
requested of us so the trucks will be able to get in a little bit easier. They request it really because of um, possible boat traffic coming in and, and getting out um, ingress, egress. But this will be a little bit easier for the truck to maneuver. Um, we do run all auto turn um, uh, programs to make sure the 18 wheeler can go. And um, it's a really good program. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but um, it shows the 18 wheeler be able to get in and get out. Um, and then the loading zone on this particular store is on the side. Um, I know that one is, this is a long gated store. So that one's, you know, the, the frontage is longer on this. So the sides, um, the stem on the side will be the delivery side. So you'll come in and deliver just on one side of the store. Um, so I don't see any um, problem with them being able to go to the adjacent property, especially with the curb. And the curb will be on every portion of the parking lot, not just the front or the parking area for um, vehicles. It'll also be in the delivery area as well. And then the dumpster will be on that side so they couldn't go any farther down, if that helps out. Okay, thank you. Just, and just taking the landscaping piece that you mentioned, uh, I'm not an expert there, but um, we'll be happy to have our folks, our, our engineers who, who work with our landscaping guys, uh, work with county code or, or work with county staff to make sure that, uh, that we adhere to code and, and make sure that uh, all that is, is done uh, appropriately and uh, with the wishes of the county. Sure. Okay. We can definitely address that issue that you're talking about. The only thing we don't want to do is hinder the um, visibility of the store or the sign for people coming and going. That way they have to slam on the brakes yes, or anything sir. like that. But um, what you're talking about is the headlights as far as the height of the vehicles. Mm -hmm. We can definitely address that. Um, I believe we have to come back in, for, in front of you guys for the site plan approval. Yeah, and maybe that would be a good time to address any concerns um, moving forward on, you know, any building requirements. Okay, that concludes my questions for now, sir. Anybody else got any questions? Add you the board. Motion to approve. Got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Jones. Mr. Chairman, may I clarify, because procedurally we're, we're doing two things here. One is the, the land use change, correct? correct. And then, then the rezoning. So the, the, the sequence of the motions would be consideration of the land use and then consideration of the request for rezoning. Okay, this is on the land use. Yes, sir. All right. <coughs> Amend your motion for that, please. Yes, sir. Okay, I got a motion on the floor. By Commissioner Jones on the land use. Been a minute. Do I get a second? <coughs> okay, motion down from like a second. Chairman, I'm having a hard time hearing. Did that, did that motion die because it did not have a second? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I'd like the motion to deny the land use change. And I have comment. I got a motion on flow by Commissioner Burke. To deny it. <coughs> Motion died behind the lack of second. First time I ever seen this. <laughs> 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 it's a reinforcement, isn't it? Uh, it, it it's a, it's a, isn't it a table <laughs> reinforcement? I mean, both I opposite motions what died. <clears throat> this is the first time I ever seen it. Uh, How's that feel <laughs> legally? 
<coughs> in my whole 60 minutes. <coughs> ain't never seen a, both of them die. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, can I make a comment, please? Yeah. I want to clarify for the board and everybody present why I made a motion to approve this land use request. See, we, we've had here in Franklin County, growing up here and hearing people talk about us, a black eye as far as business is concerned. And there is no better place for any business to be located in this county than adjacent to a state highway system. That's why I made a motion to approve this land use and rezoning. There are a bunch of property owners all through the county, and not all of them, not all of them are residential. We are concerned and we know about residences, but there's no way this entire county can be residences only. That's just not possible. Because if we do, all talk or discussion about economic development is a waste of time. Because all of our tax dollars are being spent leakage in Leon County and Bay County. They are not staying here. That is a fundamental problem. Folks, we were 30 miles away from absolutely no industry with Hurricane Michael. Because right now, tourism is the only industry we have. Seafood industry has failed. If we don't diversify our economy, we might as well do like they said on MSNBC earlier this week and board it up because there's nothing here. Any more discussion? Mr. I, Chairman, yeah. the reason that I made a motion to deny, again, is because of what it looks to me like that old adage of cascade zoning, creeping zoning. And, and I'm looking for continuity and consistency. The shopping destination is west in Carabelle. That's where, the, that's where it's planned and figured and thought of and everything. And <coughs> I'm trying to avoid this crazy cycle of confusion. This piece, that piece, all involved in mixtures of checkerboard zoning. And I want to see consistency and complement what my fellow commissioner has said with regard to economy. So that when people build an economy here, they know where to go and what to see and what to do. And that, along with other parameters that I discussed earlier, was why I made the notion, the motion to deny. Well, everybody else talking, I guess I can say my little piece too. But it's like this, hey, when you move to a place, hey, it's not going to stay that way forever. Nothing stay the same forever. I mean, you can holler about it. Commercial, bang. People didn't buy land to look at it forever. People wanted to belt their land. They got a right to do it. You got the zoning for this. I mean, you, you zone, you want to, you zone right here, next door, this commercial, across the street commercial. You're going to turn these people down behind. That's not right. I mean, if it, you can holler spotting or whatever. It's there. It's already, it's, it's been presented and somebody put it there a long time ago. I don't know when, where, but if you've got commercial property already there, it's there. We're not sitting on present. And people that just, just they talk about the, the forgotten coast, dun, dun, it's gone. People did not, hey, if I buy a piece of property, I, I got a plan. I'm gonna have a plan. And that's to make my money back. Anybody else, and all this other stuff, looking at it, this look good, that look good, this don't do that. What they should have done, if they was, or bought it all when they bought one piece, if they didn't want, if you don't want something, you buy it all. Then you won't have no problem about the next person coming close to you. Well, I think we had a very healthy process today, regardless of the outcome. And I would also like to um, just be sure we're clarified for the people here that everything went neutral and there's been no change at all. 
correct? Isn't that the outcome of what occurred this morning? Would that be a correct layman statement? You got to approve over tonight. Yeah, and right now, he ain't got to So, we no, we're not done. We're not zero. leaving here to make a decision. Now, <coughs> I'll tell you what, oh, I'm going to take that gap. I'll make a motion to approve. A motion? Have a second? Hmm? Do we have a second? Is there a second? <laughs> <coughs> motion dies for lack of a second. Procedure, where are we at, sir? <laughs> well, there's a third option that hasn't been discussed. Uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, uh, just for the public's benefit, the chairman does have the authority to pass the gavel to the vice chairman and make a motion. There's nothing procedurally incorrect about that. Uh, the board's comments that no no decision has been made is also correct. Uh, you've had a, three different motions, but there's not been a second. So no action has been taken. But the third option that hasn't been discussed uh, is tabling. The, the board does have the authority to table the matter and reschedule uh, a public hearing on this matter at a future date, or the board makes a decision today. But you, you either have to approve or deny or table. The, we can't just let it sit in limbo procedurally. Pleasure of the board, because procedural, I can't make a motion or a second. I'm holding the gavel. <coughs> I make a motion to table this, come back, be the same old thing again. And uh, I, I, in my motion, uh, we don't need no long time. Maybe uh, next week, next meeting. Mr. Mr. Schiller, tradi traditionally, if you move to table, you move to table to a specific well, well, day. Well, I was, I was okay. about to get into that. Uh, for example, on the St. George Island overlay, we, we tabled to a time specific, which was uh, March 3rd at 11, but just so the board and the public know, it's my policy that I always re-advertise the public hearing, even though we have stated on the record the date, time, and place of the, the continuation of this public hearing, there will be an ad in the newspaper. Um, so if it is the board's decision to table this until the March 3rd hearing, just understand you already have two other public hearings that day. Um, one is going to be the public hearing on the St. George Island overlay district uh, and the board's consideration of whether to remove the prohibition on residential uses on the first floor of the C4 zoned properties. The second public hearing uh, will be less complicated, less time involved, but it will involve uh, the board's consideration of a prohibition of overnight camping on your public parks, um, boat ramps things places of that nature so just to keep in mind it will be a full day so if you do want the table to the next meeting my recommendation would be uh, table this until March 3rd at 1 30. I'll say get a motion table and, and commissioners before you vote on that motion mr. Uh, chairman uh, I, I, I failed to move or ask uh, uh, the chairman to move miss uh, Gutcher's report into evidence formally do that so would you, if you accept that into evidence it'd be part of the the record that we've created today Tell me, he told me you. Yes, that's just fine. Thank you. Appreciate you doing that. Any more discussion before we vote? All in favor? Yeah, I mean, all well, in favor? Yeah, right. to the to the day, not not where we had a two. Well, I want to. We're move making it. a motion to table Third. right now. Y'all got to say when y'all want to do it, then I guess. Third. My suggestion to the board yeah. was the March 3rd meeting at 1.30 okay. p.m. But okay. Do you think that we should go March 3rd? Don't we have a really crowded schedule with that overlay? And should we go for the 
But that's what Tony Schuler was explaining. So it's yeah. March 3rd. Don't, March don't think I would say, if I can add input into that, by doing measures like this, we are crowding our schedule. So I'm doing 1.30 at March 3rd. One. Just stay it on the same day. Yep. Yep. And then you know the other thing is we table it. Everybody can hear the homework assignments that we've just given you in our discussions. You have to, to be able, you now have an opportunity to enhance your positions one way or the other. Well, they had the opportunity to get rid of it and just go and get it on over with today. So we could have. Yeah, I don't understand it. Okay, don't make sense. I'm good. Y'all ready to vote? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That motion passes. It is tabled. Just, just, what's your question, sir? <coughs> Mr. Attorney, he said the motion, the motion that's that we were voting on died for a lack of a second. So that not that, not that everything died, not that everything was dead. The motion that was made died because there wasn't a second to the motion. Motion to approve died. And the motion to deny, deny. Died. died. Yes, sir. So, so you still have. We motion to table. I just Mr. Chairman, sir, I'll talk to you after we break for the lunch. Okay? Yeah. No. Don't okay. break it. No. Uh, so. You'll hear from us. Sir, can you please refrain? Thank you. Miss Deborah Belcher, would you please come forward so we can hear from you before we break for lunch? Thank you very much. Um, I have uh, had given you a revised report uh, with three bid approvals. Um, have been unable to reach Ms. Hill, so the third one I will uh, just delete as far as requesting action. I'd like uh, board approval to approve up to $76,475 in CDBG funding for Mary and Alvin Banks for the mobile home replacement contract with Ironwood Homes of Perry, plus up to $5,500 for change orders if necessary, and additional funds for CDBG mortgage recording. This is higher than your normal $75,000 limit. The reason is, in addition to the de demolition of their existing home, uh, Mr. Banks is disabled. Um, they have an existing ramp and a covered front porch. Mr. Banks is de has dementia and is disabled, and I'd like for him to continue to have a front porch so he can sit out on and, and you know, just that's his pleasure at this stage of life. Um, so this, they will be modifying the ramp and the uh, front porch to go with the new mobile home in it. I, I wanted to explain why that is higher than the limit. Let me ask you a question. Yes, You sir. said, what, who is that Miss Hill? Oh, Kathy Hill, um, she is one that we had already talked about um, doing um, an approval and I'd asked for um, uh, board approval for for Mr. Marone and I to get uh, three bedroom proposals for her instead of just the two bedroom um, but and and also for approval to negotiate the contract the minutes showed that the motion was to get proposals but not for Mr. Marone and me to be able to to approve a contract. So I was bringing it back to you. However, I've been uh, unable to reach her for a few days. And since her taxes for 2019 are not paid yet, um, I want to with, you know, delay that one. She been contacted, I mean, y'all tried to con, she, what, did you contact her prior to she okay. know this was coming up. I she guess she did question. not know the exact date that this was coming up. I mean, it didn't know the commission meeting date. I had told her I was going to try to get it on the next board meeting, but uh, I've been trying to contact her. Her phone is not working, and she um, I haven't been able to say, hey, are you getting your taxes paid? Because I, I never ask you to approve a contract for people who, you know, it's I always subject to that. I guess my question is, is she, she know all this happening? 
Yes, sir. Okay, so we're okay. The first one we're talking about is Mary and Alvin Banks. Kathy Hill is is the third one of these uh, bid approval items, and so I just want to let you know that at this point, I the third one, I am not asking for you to approve today. I will bring it back to oh, okay it, it's not over with that right right yeah, yeah no i'm not right. asking you to deny well, it i'm just to do the two and hold off on the one okay yeah so yeah the second one is uh seventy thousand eight hundred thirty five dollars uh plus up to five hundred dollars for change orders for mary thomas's mobile home replacement she does not have any demolition ramp you know uh anything like that involved <laughs> So that's crystal, I'm sorry, crystal clear for the record. So we're approving Mary C. and James Alvin Banks, that request for the $76,475 uh, unit. <coughs> then we're approving Mary Thomas's for $70,835.50, correct? Yes, sir. What they're doing is not approving at this time the third request that you had is for Miss Kathy Hill. Correct. I want to make that clear for the record. That's right. what we're doing. That's, that's what I'm asking. But all I'm going to know is she's not getting thrown out the program. She's just coming delayed. up late on. Yeah, the, just delayed. Later there. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. So I have a motion by Commissioner Massey, second by Commissioner Lockley. Any more discussion before we vote? Yeah, now, where does the young lady here at? She in it approval today? Uh, no, sir, not today. Okay, but she in she still in. She we're we're working on it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Moon, are we ready to break for lunch? We okay, we can break for lunch. The clerk has no report, so when we come back, we'll be coming back to my report. All right. Uh, I guess one thirty. Yep, one thirty. One thirty. Turn for lunch. Yeah. Back to chairman. Okay. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry.